Welcome to the Fearless Faith Radio Show, which follows me, Mary Grothy, and my path as a Christian executive in corporate America. I share the highs and lows, provide scripture and teaching, and then interview influential guests who are walking the talk. I aim to help fill the discipleship gap for Christians in the workplace by creating powerful and real weekly lessons we can all learn from and implement. Welcome to the Fearless Faith Radio Show. Today, we are joined in studio by Pete Wilson, and I will welcome him to the show very shortly. But first, let me tell you a little bit about Pete, but he's not coming on yet, so don't get too excited. Hang tight with me. But starting in 2002, Pete founded and then led one of the fastest growing nonprofits in the country, and he led this for over 15 years. In 2010, when Thomas Nelson published his best-selling book, Plan B, Pete's book, Pete gained national attention. Since then, the title has been printed in five languages, something I aspire to achieve, but uh, Pete is definitely paving the way for me here. He has authored three more books since Plan B, Empty Promises in 2012, Let Hope in 2013, and What Keeps You Up at Night in 2015. Pete has more than 20 years of experience in nonprofit leadership. He's a best-selling author and a speaker. These days, <laughs> Pete serves as founder and CEO of the coolest named company in Nashville, Good Vibes Management, um, but he's, he's local there in Nashville, Tennessee. Good Vibes Connect Next, corporate sponsors, nonprofits, and the influential platforms of artists and athletes to amplify impact and maximize charitable efforts, all to make a bigger difference and connect brands and entertainers to good. Which, if you're like me, I mean, I don't turn down a ticket to a nice gala, and I actually MC a lot of galas. I get to MC a gala for my son's uh, private Christian school on April 27th, and I love MCing those. I love pulling on those heartstrings, and I love doing that call for cash, and it's great, especially in the name of the Lord. So that's my favorite kind of MCing to be able to do. But on that note, we'll welcome Pete here shortly. I would love to give you all a little live update, if I may. I have come to the conclusion just in really evaluating and honoring what God is doing through me and my work through the Scaling Faith keynote, my other keynote destination, Remarkable, titled after my book, this show, my social media platform, all of this. And the realization I've come to is the world isn't my stage, although it looks like that, but it's my mission field. And I never want to lose the holy fear I have for what I get to do. <laughs> do do what I get to do with this show, my speaking career or anything that I write, speak or record. Uh, the Lord has shown up so big in my life over the last few months. He's pulling me out of my comfort, which I'm grateful for because I was sad in that season last year when I just felt unused. I felt fat and happy and comfortable. And that Holy Spirit is just convicting my heart. Like I was created for more than this. And he pulled me out of that comfort, which was an answer to my prayers. And he's making me uncomfortable, especially in this season with all forms of sin, which is beautiful. So he pulled me out of the comfort that I was in vocationally, gave me this platform, gave me the courage, the confidence to be sharing my story, my testimony, build these new keynotes. Now he continues his work in me. And it's, it's surprising to see what he is doing now in my life. All of a sudden, I've noticed that he is bringing more discomfort in my life. He He's making me uncomfortable with all forms of sin. Even the smallest, most petty versions of sin, like gossip, white lies, obsessing over my appearance, worldly things that I once loved have started to make me feel icky or even cringe. Praise Jesus. I'm so grateful that this is happening inside of my life because being the best image of him that I can possibly be, especially because I'm in the spotlight, I know that there are people following me and it's a huge responsibility. It's like, this isn't about me. This is about Christ. This is pointing people to Christ, pointing people to the word. And so I love that he's bringing all this discomfort into my life because it's pruning the garden and it's helping me see through his eyes. And it is such a blessing, but worldly things, 
that I once loved. They're making me cringe in some instances. And he has just shown me what environments where I no longer fit in to the point of feeling awkward and displaced. And again, it is such a blessing. Environments that once gave me a feeling of purpose and even a sense of life, flesh-led desires I once loved and craved they're now draining me and they don't provide me with the fulfillment that they used to. Activities outside of God's will for my life seem pointless. I crave what's from Him. I stand firm knowing that the world cannot give me any satisfaction that comes close to what Christ can and has. I refuse to blend in with everyone anymore because you know what the risk is if i blend in with everyone i risk impacting no one and that sounds sad and that was the exact season that i was in last summer i sold my company i took on an incredible job that i still have today as a chief revenue officer for a payroll company in maryland and i love my role i mean i absolutely love my team and i love the work that i get to do but it's who i am in that seat it's who i am to the people that i'm responsible for it's how i handle situations. It's being the love and light of Jesus through all workplace interactions and how I get to honor the Lord through my work. It's also picking and choosing the environments that I'm in, what I'm a part of, the activities that I say yes to and that I say no to. I am a changed woman and it is such a blessing to honor the Lord and be in the secular workforce and to show what it looks like, what it can look like to be a Christian in the workplace. Oh, sorry, I'm ranting and I feel so good. I know that God created me for so much more. I'm just grateful that he's leading me down this path. And seemingly it just feels so easy right now, which is like not always the case. There'll be trials and challenges, I know. I do want to uh, remind you, if you haven't watched my cinematic performance art keynote, really, if anybody has a different <laughs> or better way of explaining what that is, I'm going with, well, I can't even say it. I'm going with cinematic performance art keynote called Scaly Faith. Go watch it. I would love for you to witness this project and see how God is working through it. That world premiere dropped on March 3rd, and it has been just a tremendous response from everybody. And, and as I shared on the show last week, you know, this isn't about me. If you feel convicted when you watch that, please pray. Please sit with the Lord and ask why certain things got stirred up inside of you. Go seek the word. Open the Bible. Let the Lord speak to you through the word in the Bible. I know that the Lord is working through me. My hope is that when you listen to the words that come out of my mouth in that performance and you have the experience that you have, please, please, please seek counsel from the Lord and he will be able to work in you and he will not disappoint you that I promise you. So you might be wondering like, well, what's the sin that you're turning away from Mary that you don't like anymore that God's uh, making it feel uncomfortable and icky. And, you know, look, there's there's a lot going on in, in my job right now. And there's so, anytime you're working in corporate America, there are probably a dozen opportunities a day to partake in a white lie or to manipulating a situation so that you come out on top. There could be a, a way that you could worship a goal or a number or a success, like winning a new client and getting ahead of calculating when that commission can be and spending that in your mind, letting your ego swell like, that's a sin. There could also be idolatry and looking at other people succeeding in the organization and wanting to be them and worshiping that success that they're having or even like asking like, well, why can't I have that? I'm working just as hard in the, that comparison. Well, that's a sin. Like when we look at also in my home life, which is where I spend my time, I don't watch TV anymore. Like I don't consume anything of this world. Like every now and then I will watch something that happens to be on in the house but I don't seek to go watch certain shows uh, there's a few movies but like hey I'm very picky now on what I will digest so when it comes to movies it's probably something on pure Flix or great American what do they call that now great American family pure Flix. I don't know. but I love that I'm also like when I go to the movies I just pretty much watch kids movies now because of my son and I just don't feed myself with the stuff of this world and it's so beautiful what God is doing in my life as a result of that and anywho on that I'm going to stop rambling that's a lot about me personally Pete is way cooler than the story I'm sharing right now and I can't wait to welcome him to the show I'm going to lead us into break and on the other side of this we're bringing Pete on so stay tuned we'll be back in just a minute 
Attention Christian business owners and entrepreneurs. Are you aiming to grow your business and magnify your impact? Innovation is key. It's not just about marketing and sales. It's about evolving and expanding in ways that matter. We at Strategic Growth Engine are committed to your growth through innovation. We're offering free access to our exclusive strategic innovation resources crafted for Christian entrepreneurs like you. Text INNOVATION to 21000 for insights and tools that will help you innovate and grow your business and your impact. Your business is more than a commercial entity. It's a platform for positive change. By innovating, you don't just grow financially, you grow in your ability to serve and inspire. Don't miss this chance to combine faith, innovation, and growth. Text INNOVATION to 21000 now. That's I-N-N-O-V-A-T-I-O-N to 21000 and start your journey of transformative growth today. At Cross Purpose, we are a movement dedicated to abolishing relational, economic, and spiritual poverty through career and community development. We believe in the power of community and the impact of giving. Give the gift of generational change. Join us in supporting motivated individuals on their journey towards a bright and new future. And these careers are just the beginning. Your generous gift helps us provide essential resources and opportunities to individuals who are determined to break the cycle of poverty. With your support, we can make a lasting impact on their lives. And your gift will support the incredible leaders that we serve, individuals who are not just changing their own lives, but transforming their communities. Together, we can help our neighbors escape poverty, enter meaningful careers, and create lasting change in their lives. Whether you're looking to volunteer your time or make a financial contribution, visit CrossPurpose.org to learn how you can get involved. Welcome back to the Fearless Faith Radio Show. I'm your host, Mary Grothy, and today we have Pete Wilson as our guest. He's joining us remotely. I'm here in studio by myself. But Pete is a best-selling author, speaker, entrepreneur, and he loves the Lord. Woo, look at that. We're four for four. Pete and I have a lot in common. Pete, welcome to our show. Uh, thank you, Mary. I'm so excited to get to get to be with you during this time. And I don't know if I can add much to what you've already said. That was so well said and so encouraging and just a fantastic reminder about how to approach the work that God's given us. Mm, it's so good. Well, I know we have a lot to learn from you today, but we need to start with your introduction because I've had the privilege of getting to know you, but our audience may not know you. So will you please spend a few minutes? I'd love for you to introduce yourself to our listeners. I want to hear about the incredible career that you've had and the work that you've done over the last 20 years. Please bless us with your intro. Yeah, so, you know, where to start, right? Uh, you know, I was in college uh, actually studying and planning on pursuing politics. I had all through high school had an opportunity, a really unique opportunity to be an intern for the governor here in Tennessee. And I just kind of thought that was the path that God had for me. And then I think it was my junior year of college is when I felt this calling to go into full-time ministry. But I didn't I didn't know at that point what that really meant. Um, you know, I had grown up in church, so blessed to have grown up in a Christian family. But to be honest, the churches that we had been a part of, you know, I got to know some of those pastors and stuff. But I just didn't see myself fitting in hmm. to that world. Um, but, uh, you know, God just kept working on me through those final years of college. And I actually started my first church this my senior year of college which wow. <laughs> looking back on that I'm like what in the world was I thinking and why in the world would anybody can you imagine this Mary going to a church where the pastor was a senior in college like <laughs> oh, I don't know why anybody anybody ever showed up but they did and it was because I was truly just being obedient to what I sensed God was calling me to do and stayed there at that church for five years and uh you know it's still going and flourishing and all these years later so so grateful for that experience but always knew felt sense that god was calling me to move back to nashville which was my home it's where i grew up uh to start a church there mm -hmm. and so many people thought 
that was crazy because if you know anything about Nashville, we're kind of right in the Bible Belt. Yes. There's churches everywhere, really good churches, Mary. Like, <laughs> so I, I was confused by it as well, and so were a lot of other people. But <laughs> God has really put on my heart the concept of starting a church for people who didn't like church. Wow. And and that's what we did. And, uh, you know, that was Cross Point Church here in Nashville, and it's still one of the largest churches in the country and had an amazing 15 year run there and God did some just incredible things. I was able to write some books, as you mentioned earlier in the intro and, uh, was just really thankful for that whole season. But 15 years in, I hit a major wall. My personal life was Mm. falling apart. I was, I was a workaholic. Um, and that led me to resign from the church and for the first time in my life, I was trying to figure out what God had for me next. And I'd just been a pastor my whole life, mm-hmm. so I didn't know, you know, what is that going to look like to, you know, possibly work outside the church. And I had that season, worked as a president of a marketing firm for a while. Eventually, uh, I would start my own business, Good Vibes Management, and uh in the same kind of period of time, I moved into executive coaching as well, which I still do and yes. absolutely love. Um, and so, you know, God worked through it all. He took all of it, which at times felt very unredeemable to me, mm. uh, and redeemed it all and really put me on a new path. And so these days I get to be an entrepreneur CEO, I get to be an executive coach, and um, I'm a teaching pastor at a church in Detroit, Michigan, and uh, just loving life. That is incredible. So you had this unbelievable call put on your life for starting a church when you were, what, what, how old were you? 18? 21. 21, okay, so you're senior in college, okay. So 21 years old. And then that led to Crosspoint in Nashville, which then flourished. So unbelievable. So you have this run as a pastor, and then you get called to go into more of the corporate world, where there's me, who has this whole huge corporate career, and my heart is so on fire for the Lord. I'm like, how do I get a platform to preach? Similarly, yeah. I don't see myself like leading a church or pastoring or doing any of that that's not specific in what god has put in front of me i actually have a lot of qualms with the american church i know my relationship with the lord i know how on fire i am with him i know how much i lean into and love scripture i know the holy what the holy spirit can do in my life and the convictions and the guidance and i feel like in constant prayer communication and communion with the lord and he has absolutely transformed my life but i sit in church on Sundays and I'm like uh what are we doing here? Like, how? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, this is a really nice lesson in American church. I'm not speaking about my church specifically, but like American church does a good job of putting on a really nice concert and then sharing a motivational speech. But I'm missing the part. Like, where does my heart get put on fire for the Lord? And where do we talk about the real things in life and how God and Christ can redeem and restore? And well, I should say that the other way. Rest, not only restore, but also redeem and bring in something just so incredible into our lives but I notice like we're missing there's a gap in the American church like a struggle of where's the call to go be the hands and feet of Jesus in the community like where are we meeting the needs of, of widows and and orphans and where are we serving like where are we opening up our, our homes where are we taking our shirt off of our back where are we doing sacrificial giving of our time and our money and just truly being Jesus in the community. So I miss some of that, you know, and so I have all my different ways of doing it. But when I thought about like, okay, I want to preach in a different way, not as a pastor. I think that through my testimony and word, like God can really work with this, but I'm, I'm still sitting here in, in corporate America. (laughs) I'm like, so you did an executive position in corporate America. And I'm like, God can work with this and he is working with this and God could work through me with the immediate responsibility I have, which I know has a snowball effect. But I think about, gosh, you know, you set this, the hearts on fire for these people under your care for 15 years, grow one of the largest churches in the country, and then boom, it's like there's yeah. something new for you. And it became really difficult point in your life when you knew that you had to step away. And so interestingly, God's like, now take all that 
and go put yourself where people need the Lord. And he's putting you in secular workforce, a corporate nonprofits. He's putting you and injecting you and your heart for the Lord into these people that are seeking more of it and don't know how to bring it forth into their careers or into the work that they're doing. So I think that that is truly incredible. When you and I met and we were yeah. speaking, you were talking about the like executive coaching piece specifically. I would love for you to share, because I know you're still doing some of that today. How do you take your life to this point in the past 20 years and everything you've done, how are you working with executive leaders who maybe are like in that lukewarm Christian status, but then helping them bring the gospel or the kingdom into the work that they're doing? Yeah, that's a great question, Mary. And it's, you know, I'll I'll answer that question. And also while doing so, kind of comment on a few things you just mentioned. I, I think you're right. I think there's a real gap in the American church and how we equip our, our leaders that are out in the real world. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, I, I, I couldn't see that when I was in the middle of it, you know, again, from the age of 21 till, you know, early 40s, my whole life was the church. Everything was inside of the church and was certainly doing my best and trying to follow God's will and equipping people. but. Let's be honest, I never had a job. I had never been in a job interview before in my life. I started two churches. Like, I, I had you never sat through a job interview, had never worked in a secular environment. And so there's some obvious gaps there. And it, it, while I never would have planned it this way or even wanted it this way, my years post being a full time senior pastor were so revealing to me Mm. because for the first time in my life, I found myself in a corporate setting and I found myself attending church, but not leading the church. And and that's the first place I saw the gap, right? Mm. Of Oh, wow. This room is full of people who are spending 95% of their time outside of this church building. And, and they're out here in, in the world impacting and moving and relating to people all around them. And I realized, and, and it's, again, it's, it's part of the reality of the organization of the church that's also part of the downside is that, you know, when I started Cross Point Church in Nashville, we had nothing. We had no people, no buildings, uh, no money, no equipment. We started from nothing. All we had was a vision, and our vision was to reach people for Jesus and empower them to be fully devoted followers mm. of Him. But, but what happens over time you know, in our case, this church takes off, it starts growing, so now there's an influx of money, mm-hmm. there's an influx of, 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 you know, property. For us, we grew, we, we had seven campuses, so we had seven buildings, seven locations wow. all around Nashville. You know, we had a staff of over 100. We had, you know, all kinds of responsibilities and things, and, and if you're not careful, what happens is the shift comes from that original vision you had, and mm-hmm. now you have all this stuff that you got to take care of. and there's the maintenance of the institution yeah and i think that's where i got a little bit lost if i'm honest and there was a disconnect probably at times mm. for the average person who was sitting out there who needed to be fed encouraged empowered to take this out into the real world and so that's where a lot of my executive coaching of uh, the idea and the inspiration for it came mm-hmm. when all of a sudden i found myself as a president of a marketing firm and I'm trying to figure out for the first time in my life, how do I connect this core beliefs and values that I have about who Jesus is and how he's impacted my life? How does that translate into what I'm doing nine to five? Wow. And um, I was able to put some of those pieces together. And, you know, I decided that probably for me, a different path moving forward to impact the kingdom was to partner with Christian business leaders and entrepreneurs and helping them bridge that gap um, and take their faith and allow it to impact the way that they lead and manage people. And uh, that's what I'm pretty passionate about doing these days. But the impact is tremendous, Pete, because I'm not going to name it here, but I know who one of your clients is. And Mm -hmm. the reach and the impact that that person has is tremendous and the fact that you're pulling this person in through your coaching 
and you are keeping Christ at the center and working through his word and empowerment and encouragement and creating that firm foundation on Christ and everything that this person is doing. I mean, this person has clients of their own that are very influential with big platforms and one tiny it's like the mustard seed right like it's it's one right. tiny 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 seed that you're planting through one person is impacting thousands if not more right. and i want to highlight how critical it is for those of us who are in the secular workforce we have to realize that we are image bearers of Christ. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. We have the opportunity to further the kingdom through our work and do not underestimate the impact you can have. And this is what I said in the opening of the show. I refuse to blend in anymore. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. You know, and why I would do it as as a protective mechanism, because I don't want to be too outspoken. I don't want to be I don't want to get fired. I don't want to be sent to HR. I don't want one of my LinkedIn posts to be concerning for another employer team member. Like, let me just hide over here and collect my paycheck and really enjoy my safe and comfortable life. That is not what Christ created me for. That is not what God created me for. I was created for something so much greater. And with that, your impact, I'm a direct recipient of the impact because your client that you work with is somebody whose company I've been working with in order to build up my brand. And through the work with that group, I've been able to produce the keynotes and my upcoming book and this radio show. Everything stemmed from that. I cried out to the Lord last fall and I begged him to put something in my life that was worthy of him and I could go on this path. And it was your client that I engaged with. And because of your coaching and your impact and how kingdom led and mission driven this organization is, I know that I got to be the direct recipient of it. And because of the calling on my life, now look at what has happened. So when we think about just does our work matter? I go to Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as for working for the Lord and not for human masters. If we can shed that need and desire to fit in, to climb the corporate ladder, to accomplish all of those fame, money, recognition titles, if we put Christ at the center of it and we pursue him and his kingdom, it is unbelievable what we can do. I look at the seeds that you planted. I look at the work that you're doing, the people that you coach, your background, like these are seeds and they are multiplying. And it is so beautiful to see how he is working through you. Thank you, Mary. I, I really appreciate that. And I think you're so right. And you hit the nail on the head when you talk about Colossians 3 and this that key word being like whatever. Right? Whatever. Whatever you do. And it, it, I think people sometimes get so focused on what their title is or where they are in the org chart. And I think scripture is clear that no matter where you are on the org chart, no matter what your title is, you have the ability to make an impact. Your work matters, and the way you approach that work is critical. And so I, I love the passion that you have around that and that you're spreading that message because I think it's so important. Well, I appreciate that. I've got to lead us into a break, which is always such a bummer. I'm like, no, let's just keep talking. But we have advertisers. We love our advertisers. They love our audience. And we want to make sure we give them that spotlight for just a few minutes. So I'll lead us into break and we will be back in just a few minutes. Are you ready to step into a world of imagination, inspiration, and pure delight? Then look no further than Life at Home Gifts and Home Decor, nestled at 109 4th Street, Castle Rock, Colorado, affectionately known as the White Barn in the Alley. Immerse yourself in a hidden gem, a haven of shop therapy waiting to transport you into a world of unique and sentimental gifts. Discover the true essence of expression through art and beautiful home decor. Come on down to Life at Home Gifts and Home Decor, the white barn in the alley. Let us be your guide to a world of beauty, inspiration, and heartfelt connections, because life is best lived at home. Can't make it to the white barn in person? No worries. Visit www.lifeatyourhome.com for an immersive online shopping experience where our treasures are just a click away. 
Are you located in the Denver metro area and ready to take charge of your future? At Cross Purpose, we don't just see you as a student, we see you as a leader, the leader of your own change. And our career development programs are designed to teach you practical skills to help you unlock your own potential and to take that crucial step towards the life and career you've always dreamed of. Choose from our diverse vocational tracks and enjoy the support you need throughout your journey. Build the skills you need for a better career. And here's the best part, it's all for free. Yes, you heard it right. Gain valuable experience through our career coaching, professional training, and increase your chances of landing that dream job. You are ready to launch your new career. So apply now at crosspurpose.org. Because at Cross Purpose, your success is our mission. Together, we can abolish poverty and build a better future for all. Go to crosspurpose.org to apply. Welcome back to the Fearless Faith Radio Show. I'm your host, Mary Grothy, and we just started interviewing our guest, Pete Wilson. We heard about his path and his journey. He started his first church when he was 21. He went on to plant his second church shortly thereafter and grew that to be one of the largest churches um, in the country there in Nashville. And he made a pivot after 15 years of doing that. He's focused on how he can impact those of us like me, executives in corporate America, or those of us with nonprofits, those of us who have a heart and we're mission driven, but it's like, how do we do this in non-ministry environments? And so he has dedicated this chapter of his life to stewarding everything good coming from God into and through all of us. So I want to hear Pete a scripture. I want to learn about a scripture that's been guiding you in this current chapter of your life. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, coming out of 2023, for some reason, I, I hit a season of, of just anxiety and worry mm-hmm. of that couple different, nothing major. You know, if I were to tell my full story, I'm sure there would be others who'd be like, really? That's what created anxiety and worry in you? But for me, it felt really real. And there's a, a passage I've been really clinging to the past couple of months, Philippians chapter four. Mm-hmm verses six through eight, where Paul wrote, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And then he says this, he says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things and that passage has been a real lifeline for me Mm. in the season and really really produced some amazing fruit as i've focused and meditated and prayed through that and has really given me just some some steps right some anchors that i needed in the season that felt um just tumultuous and um, just so grateful for that passage it is beautiful and it's real And it's one of the many promises in the Bible that God has written to us and that God enacts in our lives. I have dealt with many seasons of anxiety and it's it's been hard in a lot of seasons and that Mm. scripture in itself, when you're in the thick of it, it's a beautiful promise from the Lord. But when you're in it, it's hard. It's hard. It is. And we can repeat that scripture. And I know on some nights when I just didn't have anything left to pray, um, my favorite time with the Lord is at night when I lay my head on the pillow and close my eyes. That's when I communicate with him and recount the day and praise him for the good, the bad, the ugly, the great, um, give him the, the wins, the celebrations, give, give him the valleys. And I repent. I, I, I recount the sin. I, re, I repent from that. I pray for, for so much just in that quiet time that I have with him when I'm falling asleep. And I remember some of those seasons in my worst state of anxiety. And when I had nothing left to say, I would just start with the Lord's prayer. Yeah. <laughs> like I got nothing. Yeah. So we're just going to sit here <laughs> and we are going to pray as Jesus told us to pray. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Because I believed in the promise. And I knew that mm. even if I can't see God right now, even if I can't hear God right now, even if I just don't, he's not lifting this burden right now. I know that he is faithful. And I know that the promise was yeah. made. And I know that there is that peace. And I am praying for that peace. And I'm asking for what is written 
there in that scripture in Philippians, like, please, Lord, bring it into my life. But I also am confident in those moments that he, I actually want to hear your opinion on this, Pete, because you're a pastor. So I want to hear your opinion. I there, Somebody shared this phrase with me years ago, and I've loved it. He will not protect me from that he will perfect me through. And I have found mm. that sometimes when I'm just like praying and begging for God to change a situation, the realization what he reveals to me is he's not going to change a situation because he's changing me through it. And That's so right. I'm curious, like, what are your thoughts on, on that? I'm just always wondering. I'm like, I don't know if this is like biblically accurate or what, but I'd love your feedback on that. Yeah, I mean, there's not a specific verse that I'm aware of that I could tie to that, but there's several stories throughout Scripture. And I, I, I think that there's a big, I, I'll tell you a verse I, I get I hear all the time that gets misinterpreted, is there's a verse that talks about God not giving us more than we can handle. I knew you were going to say it before you even said <laughs> it. Go, tell us about this, please. Well, the verse is talking specifically about temptation, but people try to take that verse and apply it to all of life. And so my entire Christian life, I've had people when I was going through difficult times, you know, put their well-meaning, put their hand on my back and say, it's okay, God's not going to give you more than you can handle. But the reality is when you look at Scripture, from Genesis all the way through Revelation, the whole book is about God giving people more than they can handle. It's like the whole point. The whole point. Uh, every major character in Scripture was given something that was way beyond what they could handle, and it forced them to lean into the only one who could handle it in the first place. Oh, amen. And so I, I think a lot of us have probably repeated phrases like that, and again, well-meaning. But the truth is, God will give you more than you can handle over and over again, because that's how we're formed and shaped when we come to the end of ourselves and we surrender to Him. And so uh, I, I think your quote is, is, whether we can tie it to a verse or not, it certainly fits the biblical narrative. Good. Of God does allow us to go through those things to shape us and reform us. Well, good. I'm glad because I posted that as a reel on my Instagram a few weeks ago and it kind of caught on like wildfire. And, you know, Pete, it is a big responsibility with the stage being my mission field. I mean, this is I put myself in this position. I appointed myself like I create those reels. You know, I create the keynotes. I perform the keynotes. I will be held accountable to every word that comes out of my mouth. And biblical accuracy is very important for me. And so sometimes like my own personal conviction or interpretation of what God's doing in my life, I'm I'm fine to interpret that and, and work with the Lord on my own. But when I'm going to record that and put that out, like sheep follow blindly. I'll put that out, and if it is not biblically accurate, if it's not pointing people back to the Word or pointing them to Jesus directly, like I, I need to gut check myself because I will be held accountable to these things. So I appreciate you, uh, you sharing that. I, I, I have to ask you another question. I got to pivot here. So in the work that you're doing in your coaching work, I'm just super curious. Like, how do you incorporate faith into that? Like, are you working with these executives and leaders and entrepreneurs? Like work like do you have a structured framework for it like you sit down you're like we have a seven step process phase one is this and then we're going to do that or is it more organic of like let's figure out how to bring christ into your work and doing more of like a i guess more of an ad hoc like let's see where this goes based on where you are today where you want to go let's invite the lord into this praying with you and like working you through it like how do you structure your work what does it look like to work with you yeah, I, th- I think most people who go into some kind of life coaching or executive coaching, they start with certain frameworks that you kind of lean on heavily. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a security blanket, if you will. <laughs> Ultimately, over time, if you really want to be an effective coach or an effective mentor, uh, you you got to kind of let go of some of those frameworks and just be present in the moment, be present to the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. to lead you and guide you where that particular client may really need to go. And so I started early on with lots of frameworks and, you know, lots of prescribed, we're going to go through this and this, and and I obviously still do quite a bit of that, Mm -hmm. but I leave a lot more room these days Mm -hmm. for, you know, where people are at, what they might be going through, what God might be speaking to them about. And I, for me, that's been a much more effective form of uh, coaching. Um, and I see it in the results with people. 
when you're when you're willing to meet them where they're at and where God has them, uh, you can really get a whole lot done. Uh, you know, mo- most clients initially come to me because there's some result that they want. Yes. Uh, and I say it's a result out there in the world. They want to five X their business or they want to, you know, 10 X their platform or, and again, it's usually really good motives behind why they want to accomplish what they want to accomplish. Mm-hmm. But I often have to kind of dig into that a little bit more. And, you know, the, the reality is there's a lot of us that are chasing things mm-hmm. out there in the world. Uh, hoping it's going to fix something inside of us. Yes. And I've discovered it, and I'm sure you have too, Mary, that there is nothing out there that's going to fix something in you. No. Like, that's not, it's, it's not the way it works. Uh, and so, again, it's not that those things out there are wrong. You just can't expect that somehow they're going to be your savior or they're going to give you purpose or they're going to give you meaning because they won't ultimately. Uh, you can only get that from one place. And so someone that is pursuing goals from a place of identity in Christ versus pursuing goals to find and discover an identity is very different. And so i got to make sure that, mm-hmm. that ultimately we're working from the same foundation <laughs> and that these things that we are looking to pursue, whether it's 5X and this or 10X and that or whatever it might be, that it's coming from a pure place and one where the intention is growing our influence and impact for the kingdom. I love that so much. That's a beautiful recentering, and it, um, forgive me, I can't remember the actual verse that this is, but it ends with, for where your heart is there, whatever, where your treasure is, your heart is there also. Like, That's right. Where, what is that um, verse? What is that? Do you know? Uh, I want to say it's Matthew. Yeah, yeah it's but... Matthew. Okay. I knew. I'm like, if you say Matthew, I know it's Matthew because I was just reading that. And when I when I think about that, like, what is in our heart? You know, that it is, if, if the Lord's in our heart and pursuing Him and furthering the kingdom and whatever we do, like we talked about earlier, we're working at it with all of our heart for the Lord and not for human masters. I think that that is something to set ablaze and set on fire and, and to take forward. But there have been seasons in my life as a former business owner and, um, well, I mean, I like kind of own a little Christian clothing and swag company right now, but I, it's not like a business like what I once had. This is a tiny little dropship company that my husband and I have. But on that note, like I just think about my season as a business owner and I think about like when we'd win those awards, the accolades, when the team adopted a pretty significant growth goal, when we were scaling the company, the season where I was really off in my walk with the Lord is when I was worshiping two masters and I started to let mm-hmm. that in and my identity was in the goals and the titles the achievements the award and I, I mean some of the like um, elite groups like Vistage as an example you know you can't even join it until your business is at a certain threshold in revenue and um, same with EO like I would set these revenue goals I'm like I want to be a part of that group but I have to get to a million or I have to get to this revenue amount and you know so I'm going to scale towards this goal because I want this honor I want this prestigious whatever And so many times that I have to swap those out to be like, why? What does this matter? Like, why is this even in your heart? How does this honor the Lord? How does this further the kingdom? And I think that the fact that you're the step number one is like, why are we doing this? Let's get re-centered and figure out why we're even on this path, why you're doing this work. At the end of the day, I have proven to myself over and over again, as you assumed, that nothing of this world will ever fulfill me. I've exhausted over and over and over again the world's playbook. I keep finding myself on this terrible cycle, even as a saved woman, a a woman of the Lord and Christ and, and loving him, like I find myself trapped. I know the enemy knows the well-worn paths and can come after my soul and tempt me with these things. But when I look at your work and how you're taking these influential people, entrepreneurs, executives, people that have influence, um, authority over people, you are getting them recentered so that their heart is focused on Christ because that's where the treasure is going to be. Yes, they work that's right. in the enterprise of corporate of Erica. They have a business, but you're getting their heart right. And from that, everything else flows. Above all else, protect your heart. So I love your work. I love that. Frameworks are good. You can still use them right, but they just don't need to shape Absolutely. how the process goes. Um, I can't believe it, but Pete, we have to go into another break. Uh, how did this happen? Like, were we just on a break? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 
uh, on that. We will be back in just a moment. And when we come back, I get to ask my favorite question, which is your advice for the audience on how to have fearless faith. I have a feeling it's going to be really good. So on that note, let's go into break and we'll be back in just a few. Have you ever felt the need to carry a message of purpose into your everyday life? Well, we've got some exciting news for you. Introducing Do Remarkable Work, a Christian clothing company founded by the dynamic husband and wife team, David and Mary Grothy. Inspired by Colossians 3.23, they believe that whatever you do, you should do it with all your heart as if working for the Lord. David and Mary's journey began with a conviction to make their work a reflection of their faith. They believe that whatever your passion is, your work matters. Your efforts can further the kingdom and can be the love and light of Christ through your work. Do Remarkable Work's signature clothing and accessories will empower you to share the good news of the gospel with encouraging phrases and trendy designs. Visit DoRemarkableWork.com to place your first order now. Make a statement with your wardrobe and proclaim the message that your work matters to God and the kingdom. Be part of Do Remarkable Work's mission to inspire and uplift others through the power of faith and fashion. Visit DoRemarkableWork.com now and get ready to wear your faith. You are ready to transform your workplace and look no further than P&I HCM, your partner in building and maintaining the experiences your employees deserve. At P&I HCM, they take pride in offering cutting-edge payroll and HR solutions designed to streamline your people operations from recruitment to retirement. P&I HCM is your partner in creating a remarkable employee experience that boosts engagement, productivity, and your bottom line. In a world where only 33% of the workforce is engaged, choosing the right human capital management technology is crucial. P&I HCM isn't just a solution, we're your strategic ally. With P&I HCM, you're not just adopting technology, you're embracing a culture of belonging, appreciation, and longevity. Because when your workforce thrives, so does your organization. If you are ready to save time and elevate your employee experience, visit www.pnihcm.com now. And let us show you why we're the driving force behind successful workplaces. Attention Christian business owners and entrepreneurs. Are you aiming to grow your business and magnify your impact? Innovation is key. It's not just about marketing and sales. It's about evolving and expanding in ways that matter. We at Strategic Growth Engine are committed to your growth through innovation. We're offering free access to our exclusive strategic innovation resources crafted for Christian entrepreneurs like you. Text INNOVATION to 21000 for insights and tools that will help you innovate and grow your business and your impact. Your business is more than a commercial entity. It's a platform for positive change. By innovating, you don't just grow financially, you grow in your ability to serve and inspire. Don't miss this chance to combine faith, innovation, and growth. Text INNOVATION to 21000 now. That's I-N-N-O-V-A-T-I-O-N to 21000 and start your journey of transformative growth today. Welcome back to the Fearless Faith Radio Show. I'm your host, Mary Grothy. We are deep in our interview with Pete Wilson out of Nashville, Tennessee. This is a man planted two churches. One of them just really took off their cross point in Nashville. He stepped away from it a handful of years ago, and he's been an executive coach working from the place of of being a pastor and, and loving these incredible stewards of the kingdom in secular workforce. So on that, I'm grateful for everything you've shared so far. My favorite question that I get to ask in every show, because this show is called Fearless Faith. I mean, it's all about like, how do we stand firm and be bold and to be fearless in our walk with the Lord and to make sure that the calling on our life is executed, to make sure that nothing that we're doing to uh, is stopping that, what God has for us and how we're going to live it out. So what is your advice for us? How do we have fearless faith? No, that is a great question. And, you know, it's funny. Uh, I get asked about fear quite a bit, and uh, often it's phrased like, how do I fear less? Hmm. And I'm not sure that's the best question. It's a good question, but I think a better question is not how how do I fear less, but how do I trust more? Hmm. And, and the bottom line of that for me is this. If you can't find ways to celebrate God's faithfulness in your past, you'll never trust Him with your future. 
And I think for a lot of us, you know, we're, we're often told in our culture, don't look back, don't look, and that, there's good reasons why we say that. But one area of your life where there's a lot of wisdom in looking back is looking back at God's faithfulness throughout mm-hmm. your life. And the more you see his faithfulness in your past, the easier it is to trust him with your future and to step into those moments, right, where you do have fear. And so something I'll say often to my clients when they're talking about some kind of fear, especially as it relates to them expressing their faith, living out their faith, is I'll say, hey, it's just fear. Mm -hmm. It's just fear. (laughs) Fear in and of itself isn't necessarily bad. It's how you respond to that. And so for me, it's not, you don't try to create a life where there is no fear. It's not necessarily something to avoid. In fact, when I feel fear, I often almost use it like a compass because it's pointing me to something that's really important. It's pointing me to something that I deeply care about. And so fear is, fear is always bound to show up whenever possibility does. And so when you have those opportunities, those possibilities to express your faith through your work, no matter what, it, this could be as simple as the conversation you're having with a coworker over lunch. Yes. And you see, you see that possibility. You, you hear what they're talking about. You know it connects to your faith. You know you could share a verse or some encouragement mm-hmm. about your own spiritual journey. And all of a sudden you feel that fear. See, I, I think that's there because it's pointing you to something you actually deeply care about. Mm-hmm. There's there's a possibility there. And so I say lean into that. You know, it, it, everyone, it's interesting, everyone wants confidence when it comes to living out their life and their faith. But I say confidence is not a prerequisite. It's a result, <laughs> right? Confidence is what comes on the other side of you having that conversation and sharing your faith. Confidence is what comes up on the other side of standing up for your values or confronting evil or resisting temptation. It's not a prerequisite. And I think so many believers think when they have that opportunity to live out their faith and their values, again, whether that's a conversation or a decision, I think they feel like they don't have the confidence to do it, so maybe they're not ready. Yeah. Right. And I always tell people, like, that's great. That's a perfect place to be when you don't feel like you're ready. Because God has a long, long history of using people who were not ready. When you're not ready, you're in the best position you could be to be used by God. And so don't wait till you have this, you know, rock solid confidence. That's not a prerequisite, that is a result of actually stepping out and living out yes. your faith in each and every situation. That is so beautiful. The problem that I I feel when that fear sets in is this inner conflict. And it's the inner conflict when that fear sets in, like, what do I do? And I'm facing the decision. There's a pivot right there in front of me. And I agree with you. It's not like we're trying to abolish fear. I don't think we can. I think with how we're created as humans and and living in a fallen world, I think this is something that we just have to build into our lives and figure out how to navigate. But it's what do we do when fear arises? And there's a response. So I once heard through someone, I don't know if it uh, came through, I think it maybe came through Sandler training, but even they may have picked it up from someone else. But I heard that the power is between the stimuli and the response. So whatever mm. triggered the stimulus, whatever triggered that fear, there the power is in the space between the fear being triggered and then our ability to intercept it, grab it, digest it, understand it, and then choose how to respond versus reacting. So fear grabs a hold of us in the stimulus or the trigger if we're just quick to become victim to the fear and we react. Typically that's That's an emotional reaction that we're not real pleased with later. It's something that if we look back, we say, you know, I I wish I had handled that differently or um, I acknowledge the situation differently. So there's this space in there and i think if we just yield and pause and bring the lord into that moment can he not take that for us absolutely i mean absolutely i I think what you shared is super powerful and i 
I'm grateful for everything that you've shared today, Mr. Wilson. I would love to ask you, how do people get in touch with you? Is there anything specific that you wanted to share, whether it's books or your website or anything you're working on? Um, Go ahead, take a minute. Yeah, I I think probably the two best ways to connect with me, uh, I'm on Instagram, it's P Wilson, the letter P and my last name Wilson. Uh, that's always kind of a, a fun place that I get to interact with people and really enjoy that. And then my website is PeteWilson.co, C-O, PeteWilson.co. Those are two places you can get a hold of me or interact with me. And I uh, always love meeting new people and being able to encourage people on their journey, whatever it is. Um, I, I'm always attracted to people's dreams and love coming alongside of them and helping them accomplish those in any way possible that's going to give God glory and so um, yeah those are probably the two best ways okay that's incredible and when we post the show obviously we're airing right now but we'll post the podcast on Tuesday and that'll be up at fearlessfaithradio.com you can click on that you can also access it on all of your podcast platforms we'll have the show notes we will link to Pete's Instagram P. Wilson and also his website and then we will mention those books again so if anybody is eager to learn from Pete and the books that he has authored we will go ahead and link to those as well so people can grab them. Um, Pete, before we sign off here, I just want to give a very heartfelt thank you. I know that you agreed to do this show just after our first meet and greet. I was so moved by your story and I thought this is going to be a blessing to our audience. So thank you so much for agreeing to come on today. It is such a pleasure to have you. Of course, Mary. It was a pleasure. I'd love to come back on another time and thank you for the work that you're doing. Um, in the workplace for the work you're doing on this show I know you're encouraging a lot of people well I appreciate that thank you so much for the kudos on that note um, I'm going to wrap us for today it always goes by so fast it makes me so sad I love my time with you our audience I am grateful for you being such a loyal listener base and also for the follows the likes the ratings the reviews the purchases and the doremarkablework.com swag store don't forget to uh, go swag up if you haven't been to our store and last but not least two things go grab a copy of my book destination remarkable surviving the dark side of success if you haven't yet and last but not least go watch scaling faith if you haven't the world premiere dropped on march 3rd and i would love for you to go back and to watch that if you haven't And if you have share it with somebody that needs the good news and the gospel and i know that the lord will work through it thanks everyone and we'll see you next week That's it for today's episode of Fearless Faith. Be sure to connect with me, Mary Grothy, G-R-O-T-H-E, on all social platforms and to learn more about my keynote speaking and other ways to work with me at marygrothy.com.